Okay, so I've got the model uh, that I've made of this building starting to come together, and I'm at the point where I uh, need to look at uh, the elements I'm modelling in the interior. But it's getting a bit difficult to see all those things clearly. If I go to my 3D view, and, and I'm in the default 3D view that you'll get by clicking on the house button on the quick access toolbar at the top, or going to the 3D um, with parentheses around it in your 3D views category. Remember that's a uh, axiometric view, so it's obviously not in perspective. If you've made a perspective view, that sometimes will be useful for viewing your interiors, but even that is um, problematic. It's great for looking at things, but very difficult to work in, especially in Revit. Revit doesn't make it easy to work in perspective. Uh, I've been showing you that you can make section views, so don't be afraid to make as many sections as you need to see what's in your interior. And by going to this section, you can see then uh, some of those elements that I've placed in my interior. But even with the section, it's difficult to work out exactly what's happening there. So uh, I'm going to make a new 3D view, starting with the default 3D view. And because I want to keep this view set up um, the way I'm going to set it up, I'm going to duplicate the view and give it a new name. And this is really important when you're working with uh, multiple views, give them sensible names and, uh, and, and try and manage them in some kind of way. So here, by right-clicking on that view name, 3D in parentheses, uh, and then going to duplicate view and duplicate. Uh, so detailings uh, in Revit, things like text and dimensions, which you'll see on the annotate tab. So sometimes it's called annotation, sometimes it's called detailing. You can see here we've got this detailing panel. So all of those things are considered the same, annotation and detailing, and they're 2D. So they go, they're like overlays on top of the view. And so it's an interesting thing, actually. I'll just quickly make some text here and make it big enough for you to see it. So we'll say this is uh, for you. Let me make that a bit bigger. Just with the text tool, so on the annotate tab, you've got the text button there. And that's how you make regular text, not with the uh, model text tool on the architecture tab. That's something completely different. Annotate. Yep, annotate, and then there's a text button, a big A in the middle. And so now if I duplicate that view, and hopefully um, duplicating views is something you're getting used to with plans and, and views like that, so you can duplicate them as well, obviously, and if I right click and choose duplicate view and uh, then duplicate again this time with the ground floor. I've got then ground floor copy one and I've lost that text. I'll undo it and then join from dimensions and you'll see that dimensions are the same. Okay, so I've got a dimension there. Again if I duplicate the view just choosing duplicate It'll give me all of the model elements, so the walls and the floors and everything that's real, but not the annotation. So if I instead choose duplicate with detailing, then it will give me the text and the dimension. And then I see that also Yeah, don't use that. Just avoid that one at first. It's a bit trickier. So are these all independent of each other? No, so it's not like a graphics program or a CAD program. Or, or like AutoCAD, yeah, it's all views of the same model, and that's the key concept with Revit. All of these views are viewing the one building information model, and and that's really where the name of the program comes from, or the type of software. So back to my 3D views, I've got 3D copy one, and now I'm going to right click and go to rename, and I'm going to call this 3D section box okay because I'm going to use this section box option which I think I might have shown you briefly but you may not remember because it was a little while ago do you remember using section boxes yeah 
Yeah, yeah. I've shown them, but it was a while ago. So I'm going to click OK. And then you'll see over here, the first thing you need to check is that you've got the view properties open. And so the properties panel should be there normally, and it should say 3D view at the top. If you click to select something, then it'll have the name of that thing that's selected. So you just need to make sure there's nothing selected so that you can scroll down in that properties panel and find section box. So it's just a tick box. Once you tick section box, so next to where it says section box, it's about halfway down. And then in your view, you might need to zoom out to find that box that'll go around whatever you've modelled. <laughs> you might need to zoom out or... Oh, I'll have a look in a second. So now, if I select that box, I can use the arrows on the side to cut away the building. So no, you need to make sure nothing's selected. So deselect. Oh, I was selecting the wrong one. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so I'll bring this back maybe to the right a little bit. And you can see then, as I bring it further to the left, I can see this interior space that I'm trying to work with. But I'm losing some of those, um, like the back of this seat. So I'm going to bring it back to the right, or down and to the right. And now the wall's in the way. So there's nothing to stop you from also hiding things. So I just want to go over hiding and unhiding as well. If I select that wall, I can right click, and then hide in view elements. If I choose category, I'll lose all the walls. I don't want that, so I'm going to choose elements to hide just this wall. And I can do the same with the section box itself. So if I select it, right click, hide in view, elements, and that just makes it a bit easier to see the other things. But now I might want to adjust that section box further. So to see anything that's hidden, you've got the light bulb button down the bottom, which is the reveal hidden elements button. Click on that and it'll show anything that's hidden with this magenta pink sort of colour. And so if I select that section box, even though it's hidden, I can still <laughs> manipulate it. And this is one of the great things about Revit, you can still work on things while they're hidden. So I'm just stretching using the arrows at the top to bring that down. Oops. Oh, so you're changing the floor levels? No, no, I'm, I'm changing, I'm just cutting away different parts of the building. So by dragging that box, you can see it's cutting all the parts that are outside away. It's not changing anything, it's only affecting That's this view. Yeah. But then, then you take the light bulb off and see that. Uh, yeah, that's right. When you turn the light bulb off, then it goes back to normal mode. And then get it all back and go back into the light bulb. Yep. If it becomes too difficult, so there this wall is, is back because it's a hidden object and I'm in reveal mode so it's being revealed and if I want to unhide anything I can while it's selected have a look up here and you can see how you've hidden it. So if it's been hidden by category you'll get the option to unhide category if it's been hidden by element you'll get the option to unhide element. So it's gone grey which means it's not hidden and if I click on the light bulb it'll display normally again. Uh, and so it's actually a better system than AutoCAD. AutoCAD gives you the option to hide uh, layers by turning them on and off, but it's impossible to work on things while they're on a layer that's turned off. And it's harder actually to just check quickly what has been hidden. But it's a nice thing in, in Revit having that reveal option and you can just easily see anything that's hidden. And so I'll hide this again, but then I'm going to show you one other really useful option. So you've got then another way of hiding, again, a bit like AutoCAD. So in AutoCAD you've got freezing and, and then the on-off option for your layers. 
So Revit, you've got that on-off option, which is uh, essentially hiding and unhiding either elements or categories, which you get usually by just right-clicking. Um, don't forget what we were looking at before. If you go to the full list, you can see all the categories if you're interested and hide things that way, which you looked at right at the beginning. But once you get used to doing it by right-clicking and then using this reveal button to see anything that's hidden, you often don't need to use that list so much. Uh, but then there's another way of hiding things. I'm going to select this ceiling to show you. Um, you've got the glasses button down the bottom, which is your temporary hide button. So I can use that to hide this one element, the ceiling. Or I might want to work on one particular element and hide everything else. So maybe I want to work on this, this unit here that I've modelled. So if I select it, I can then go to the glasses again, and this time, isolate element. So that's really useful when you're working with interiors elements, just to get rid of everything else uh, and focus on that one thing. So I select now, edit in place, and I can uh, make some changes. And if you're wondering how I made that, that's been made entirely using modeling tools I've shown you. So I haven't used any tricky modeling tools here. It's entirely done with extrusions. It's just that one of those extrusions is done with a different plane. So literally, if you want to work on just one part of the thing, yep. the space. Yep. Okay. Yep, you just select it and then go to isolate element. Yep. So now I want to bring everything back. I've finished what I want to do. So I'm going to click on the glasses again and this time reset temporary height isolate and it'll bring those things back. So it's that easy. And with interiors especially it makes things much easier if you can see what you're doing because when you have modelled your whole shell around your building it's obviously going to hide the interior and you need to then be able to get back in and see what's inside. And so the final thing I'll say there is that you can have as many of these views as you like. So I've got one section box one view there I've called section box. I might duplicate that and then call it section box level one. And then I'll just unhide my section box, bring it up. Yep. So that way I can see the upper story as well.